Have yourself a body cuddy Christmas. Let your dice be light. Man, these get worse as the well starts to run dry. Alas, it is that time of year again, and I, Benjai, Padre Navidad, Klaus, is here to bring you the 10 most drool-worthy and mega-complex heavyweight board games that are just begging to be wrapped, and subsequently unwrapped, by you or a loved one. Hell, even someone you like deserves a bit of this list. In layman's terms, these games are for the hardcore devotees of this fine hobby. So if you or you're gifted like a meaty, brain burny time at the table, then join me as I count from 1 to 10. And if you're minded to, please do smash that like button, subscribe to the channel and massage that notification bell if you haven't already done so, to ensure your finger is always on the pulse of this here channel. Number 1. Bonfire Might feature strange theming that have a group of gnomes running errands for mysterious guardians of light so that they can relight fires of the Bon variety. Uh, yes, drugs were taken in the writing of this here backstory. But as Euros go, this is pleasantly complex, with a less than painful learning curve, despite the mishmash of mechanics that include tile placement and set collection. The action selection is where it's at, as you navigate your boats in and around islands, picking up jobs and dropping off goods to get your well-earned rewards. This is a game that will very much appeal to you if you like forward planning, as a lot of information is readily available to you from the get-go, and navigating your way to the most points will definitely scratch a puzzle-like itch. Number 2. Dominant Species Marine Tells the story of the ending of an ice age and its impact on four different types of aquatic animals. But, as it just so happens, there's not enough room for four types of water breathers, and only the fittest will survive. Its worker placement will see you aiming to dip your toes into as many different habitats as possible in order to unlock the most powerful card effects. With area control playing a large factor as well, it's important you don't spread yourself too thin because, well, there is a great deal of player interaction and push and pull alongside some very swingy event cards that mean ducking and diving is just as much a part of any given success story. Number 3. Praga Kaput Regni sees you taking on the guise of wealthy citizens getting their build on in medieval Prague. Keen to gain the favour of the gaffer King Charles, each of the six available actions in this city building game will vary on a sliding scale of cost depending on how much they get used. Front and centre is the rondelle system that encourages diversity in action choice, but still allows you to manipulate the order in which the actions get to the front of the queue. And whether you're adding buildings or walls to your player board, advancing along the communal king's road, or generating resources, this provides deep strategic gameplay on the back of an easy breezy turn structure. Number 4. Alma Mater continues the somewhat dry theming of this section of the list. Here you get to don the headmaster's cap of a 15th century independent university. The goal being to enhance the school's reputation and standing. So far, so let's hope the fun is in the playing in this worker placement Euro. You'll find a heady mix of competitive spaces, including those that cost more meeples if you come late to the party, and free-for-all actions. That being said, although this is most definitely a meaty game, there's only going to be so much stopping you pursuing your own game plan. That just leaves you and your asymmetric abilities, books as currency to attract new students and acquire new professors, all in a point grab over six rounds of play. Number 5. Crystal Palace takes you to the shores of Gran Britannia for the quote-unquote first World's Fair. Although Wikipedia seems to suggest it was like the 20-something. Quibbles aside, this great exhibition of works of industry sees you placing dice for a bit of a change, and 
quite interestingly sees you determining the stats of your dice. But as one would expect, the more you pimp your numbered cubes up, the steeper price you pay. And whilst some of the patrons to the fair might be swimming in cash, you as players are most certainly not. Which makes the availability of loans an oft present need. If you're looking for something a bit different and also want some straight up economy, capitalist shenanigans, then give this a look see. Number 6 Oath Chronicles of Empire and Exile is the semi spiritual successor to the all conquering asymmetrical war game Root. Here, though, with similar aesthetic but differing theme, you play as agents propping up the tried and tested way of things or plotting the downfall of the current ruling hierarchy. And on and on it goes, because this is, shall we say, legacy gaming with a twist? Wherein the choices you make will have an impact on the available factions and the shape of the landscape through each playthrough. So whilst it's area control at heart, this wears its ambition well and truly on its sleeve requiring invested players to put their diplomacy and role-playing hats on to really eke out everything it has to offer. Number 7. Tekenu, Obelisk of the Sun, aka Welcome to Ancient Egypt Dice Drafting Style, where the ominous looking obelisk actually provides a mechanical function, as the shade cast by it on the game board will impact both game length and what one can achieve. Elsewhere, the six sections on the board all represent one of a smattering of Egyptian gods. Job one then is to be drafting different coloured dice, not all of which will be available at a given time, and then taking different actions depending on which god you choose, allowing you to build structures, pillars and workshops, or focus on the happiness of your people, or finally gathering cards that will open up further actions. There is most definitely plenty to chew on in this here box. Number 8 CO2 Second Chance which is just funny talk for second edition and sees you tackling the age old pollution crisis as you play the role of clean energy firms looking to be the long term saviour of the planet whilst making a healthy buck at the same time. Here we have a splash of worker placement, a dash of area control and a sampling of tile placement and can be played both semi-cooperatively and semi-competitively. Are they the same thing? No, but one leans on the save the world angle and the other is how mercenary can I be whilst doing this clean air guff. As with most of Lacerda's games, this is about as thinky and complex as you'll find, and a decent stab at refining an already respected game. Number 9, Trismegistus, the ultimate formula, goes all in for the most tongue-twisting, awesome board game name award, but also makes sure what's in the box is worth your time and energy too. So you see, alchemy and transmutation is the theme, and iconography and puzzle is the game. Because all you're technically doing on your turn is drafting a dice, or using one you drafted previously. Seriously, that's it. But the actions you can take and the interactions with the board are almost but not quite limitless. As one would expect from an industry so attuned to experimentation and trial and error. Ultimately, your final points haul will be a reflection of how well you activate artifacts, perform experiments, and rake in the gold. And number 10, On Mars, is most certainly weighty strategic fare, whichever way you swing it. There are a myriad of actions to choose from each turn, and you'll be passing around the table until everyone's spent. The hook being that certain actions will be available to you only if you're in a certain space on the board, representing both the orbiting space station where it's all about resources and getting them to the planet's surface, where you use said resources to build and expand colonies. Each turn consists of an action or actions and then movement, 
which sounds pretty straightforward, but rest assured, the doing things, and then the shall I shan't I conundrum of moving and forward planning is about as strategic as you'll find a game. And so that was and is a very tasty list of 10 heavyweight games that will most assuredly tax that brain and um, take up a whole evening of gaming. If you do decide you're going to add to Basket, then please use the affiliate links found in the video description. It helps out a great deal. And be sure to check out our list of our already published lightweight and medium weight recommendations. Our final video in this series will take it down a notch with a nice selection of stocking fillers for those last minute purchases. Alas, I have been the voice of Board Game Center and this video has ended. <laughs>